Hello and welcome everybody to 1939. Great Depression is stagnant at this point. Unrest war in Asia, war in Europe. Tons of shipping sunk in the Atlantic. And it, I, like to, I like to be happy in these videos, but sometimes the world climate is just, hmm. You know, this is pre-Pearl Harbor. Is that a positive thing? I don't know. If you look closely here, you'll see this is a brassy. Now, a brassy is not that old of a term. I mean, TaylorMade had a metalwood brassy in the 80s. So it's not like nobody's ever heard of a brassy before. I always think of it as a two wood, but there's always somebody who corrects me. They're like, tap on their phones. Hello, vintage golfer. It's a one and a half wood. How pedantic can you really be? If we plow through the pedanteria, we find that a brassy is a really low lofted fairway wood, right? Like a one and a half wood or a two wood. And when you're dealing with something like that, you're going to have some turf interaction. And look at this in 1939, 80 years ago, they're selling turf interaction. It's 2020 at the making of this video. And I've seen every major manufacturer advertise turf interaction, maybe not with all of their products, but especially with their irons and fairway woods. So guess what? Golf clubs are going to interact with the turf and they were marketing it 80 years ago. Turf Rider model, and look how they've done this with these channels right here. It says Brassy right here. I'm excited to hit this. Let's have a closer look at this beautiful non-insert wood right here. So all the markings here you can see pretty clearly. Gallagher, here's looks like a serial number. Turf Rider model. And you can see, look at this, 430B. Look at these lovely grooves right here. We have a five screw sole plate. Brassy right here. Let's spin around the skirt real quick. You can see the screw pin right here. You can see this lovely wood all the way around. And then we have this awesome cross hatch pattern groove on the face of this wood. It's just so beautiful. Back when it was just a piece of wood, not too complicated. And you can see the Wilson flags right here. Wilson flags. And it says airflow. Air, what aerodynamics back in the, I thought this was a new concept. Looking at Ping and TaylorMade and everybody, Callaway all bragging about there. Here's an aerodynamic club for you. Moving up, it's called airflow. It's anyway, moving up the wood here, you can see they have plastic ferrules right here, two piece plastic ferrule. We moved up a stepped shaft. You can see the pitting right here. I'm not sure if it's really called pitting, but it's, there are little bulges right here. And then look at this, on the shaft, it's stamped, true temper. Look at that. Is that wicked awesome or what? Sure beats a little sticky label. And then we have this really rock hard, perforated leather grip right here. You can see just absolutely beautiful with this little cutout right here. So with a club this beautiful, we can't just leave it here on the table. We need to take it out on the range and duff around with it. All right, running a Turf Rider model Brassy with a slick leather grip. We'll see if I can hold on to this. We'll start out with a nice uh, little pat pat. A little slight pull on that one. Felt really good. No inserts, no screws. Just turf interaction. Got that one a little high on the face. And we'll give it one more shot here. Not bad for such an old club. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I could play this like turf interaction, who knew? What can I tell you about turf interaction if I teed it up, right? So. Let's just say when you tee it up, this feels amazing. It feels like a modern three wood. It, it really does. I mean, look at the size of this head. This is the size of a modern three wood. So maybe a five wood, you know, depending on which model you're getting, but it's lovely to hit. It sounded, it sounds wooden. It's so cool. There's no face insert and it still has that nice clack to it. I was really impressed with this and I hit a hard range ball and look, no dents speaks volumes about the wood that they used even back then. So wonderful, wonderful to hit. I'm excited to 
actually get out and play with this. The problem is I need to round up a set of clubs from the 30s. And as you can imagine, through the Great Depression, there weren't exactly millions and millions sold. So we'll see what we can come up with. But this, definitely a piece of history, really volatile time in the world. Let me know your thoughts about the old school turf rider model. They have a few turf rider models and let me know if you've ever got a chance to hit one of these. And what do you think about the whole turf interaction thing? I, I've never been able to, I'm not, you've seen my swings, you know, I, the lie is probably a bigger deal for me than turf interaction. So let me know your thoughts about turf interaction in the comments below. 80 year old, 80 years old, they're still advertising that. If you want to support this channel, please subscribe. You can also visit that link I'll put in the description for my Amazon golf shop. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. I am an Amazon influencer. If you would also be so kind to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.